Bonjour. Ah, bonjour, monsieur. Très bon bonjour. <laughs> I feel like we're on Seb Delaney FR right now. <laughs> yeah. Oui. Ah, bonjour, Seb. Seb bonjour. bonjour. Comment t'appelles-tu? Hello, one and all. Welcome to Scene Through Glass. Paul Wallace is here. We are here, East Nor Castle, for a Land Rover driving experience. Uh, we're sitting in our cars now because we've just had our COVID tests and we're waiting for the results. 30 minutes. 30 minutes now we've got to sit here with no phone signal. So we're having to talk, yeah. <laughs> which is unbearable. <laughs> it's been about three months if I had to talk to anyone face to face. I don't really know what to say. But look, why am I here? Well, you may have picked up on the fact that recently I've been hinting at the fact that maybe I'm going to part ways with this X3. It's been great. Paul loves it, but it doesn't really excite me. And you probably noticed that because I, I very rarely film this car. And I'm also a UK automotive YouTuber, so it's unlikely that I keep it for longer than a year. Time to swap. Time to, it's been nearly a year. Time to go. I actually signed a three-year PCP on this thing, so financially it's probably going to be a disastrous move. But I just <laughs> like might all of your cars. Like, <laughs> like all of my cars. My attention gets just drawn to too many other cars. There's a really nice old Range Rover off-roading the orange one. And I'm already like, I want to go and buy that instead of the G4. Anyway, as you can see, I get distracted. And one car that's been kind of drawing my attention recently, the new Defender. You've been banging on, Paul's been banging on about the new Defender really ever since it came out. Yeah. I was a bit unsure for a while. Then I drove one, kind of understood it a bit more. And in recent months, the Urban one came out that you yeah. filmed, right? I filmed the Urban one, it looks great. I've just seen a few specced up cars and I'm like, yeah, I'm intrigued. And today, I'm going to be testing the Defender as all Defenders should be tested. Yeah. Off road. Yeah. Because I've only driven it on road. And whilst I doubt. Well, I, maybe I will do some more off-roading in the future. Hey, staycations are going to be a thing, right? <laughs> yeah. So maybe the only adventures I'm going to be able to have are off-road. Uh, so this could be this could be an intriguing way to analyse whether the Defender could replace this X3. I think X3. it's a good he, I mean, he's, it, a lot of the pressure is coming from this guy. <laughs> anyway, we're going to sit here, wait and find out whether we are positive or negative. I mean, it's going to be a really bad video if either of us... Well, if I test positive. I think if you test positive, you just go home and I keep going, right? I don't know. I just don't make a video. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, fingers crossed, we both test negative, we can go out and have a fun day. Alright gents, everyone's good to go. Woohoo! Well, welcome to my Defender for the day, a currently very white 110. Now, I actually prefer the looks of the 90, the shorter wheelbase Defender, but I don't think it's as practical as this car. And if I was to replace the X3 with a new Defender, it would have to be the 110 because well, I need it as a daily. I need to be able to fit loads of stuff in the back and get people in when people are allowed to be in the car with me. So yeah, this is the one that I'd choose. It is massive though, and I've forgotten how massive it is. 5,000 acres of off-roading to explore here at East North Castle. Uh, Land Rover have been here for years. So yeah, should be loads of different sort of varieties of conditions to experience. Very easy there. so far. Yeah, well, yeah. the whole point is trying to be more intuitive, but also simplify the option once you know which buttons. To sure, okay. less intimidating than the old yeah. active locks. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Right, we are setting off. Wish me luck. I wish Paul Wallace luck, because I, I do slightly expect him to plow into the back of me at some point, but here we go. Oh, I can probably take that off now. Let's find out how we're going to get on. I hear you've already broken the car. What? what Someone on the radio, they said car number no, three has crashed four times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see the little dink down here. <laughs> oh my God, it actually is. <laughs> At least he wasn't panicking on the radio, saying this car's not stopping. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear me? Did you hear me? I was like, I don't think the hell the sense working. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> this is so intense. Why is my 
I can just hear you shrieking. I turned my walkie talkie off. And then you turned the walkie talkie off? Turned it off by accident. Oh, I had a panic attack. I was like, guys, I'm sliding! Oh no, I can hear that. Oh, okay. Even with it off. <laughs> just through your window. I mean, strangely enough, as well, in that situation, sometimes speeding up the hill to send target can get the speed back down. Oh. So you speed up, slow down, which is. You'll see a clip on my GoPro when I was just like. <laughs> you see the big tree just behind your. your yeah, there. yeah. The car looks as though it wants to hit that. Okay. But it won't. It won't, okay, fine. So don't lift too much. Sure, okay, just keep. So and Don't oversteer too much. Okay. Um, and just keep the car moving. Okay. Wish me luck. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> That's a little bit more throttle. Keep it going, keep it going. So this this more speed yeah, the whole thing. Momentum. Okay. And you're better off failing through a lesser speed than you are going too mad and coming off the track and piling it into something. So okay. <laughs> that's good, but a little bit more throttle. A little bit more throttle, okay. Power, power, power. Yeah, that's a good. Well, that was freaking intense. Definitely the most intense section for me so far, these deep uphill mud ruts. I just, my, I just don't, my technique's not there. I don't do this at all, really. I'm always on road. So yeah, just figuring out how much throttle you use, how much steering out you use to get around the corner. I, well, I just didn't know what I was doing, so I had to do a couple of attempts. Paul, how did you find the deep uphill mud ruts? Uh, can your BMW X3 do that? <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's the point. Awesome day out it's been down here at Eastnor today mainly because well it's been a day out something I feel like I haven't had in ages and just to reiterate once again uh, we all had our COVID tests as we arrived this morning we couldn't even get out of the car until we tested negative and all the instructors and teams that work here at the Land Rover Experience Centre regularly tested in fact I was actually tested last week as well so yeah everyone's ensuring that we're following government guidance and that safety protocols are in place so that we can just have fun and not worry too much but yeah fundamentally Defender did everything it should have done today like it was more of a test of my ability than the cars because if a defender couldn't make its way through some muddy farm tracks in the UK well it's failed massively. I did say it though when I first drove one last year that I actually think this new defender won't end up going off-road as much as the old one did because now it's even more of a kind of status symbol a lifestyle tool. I think people will be using it to go to the supermarket or their organic farm shop to buy smoothies and coffees and things like that but it's kind of the knowledge that you could go off-road and the car would handle it so well. For me personally if I were to replace the X3 with a defender would I be taking it off road that much? Maybe not, but, but maybe yes, I could. And because I think staycations are gonna be a thing for all of us here in the UK for a while, the thought of heading up to Scotland and seeing a sort of dirt track and going, heck, I'm gonna head down there with my Defender knowing that I'm not gonna get into too much trouble apart from potentially with the land owner. So yeah, it is appealing. They've, they've kind of hit the nail on the head perfectly, Land Rover, where it's rugged and rough enough to take on something like we've done today, but also kind of nice enough to then cruise around town in or, or live with on a day in day out basis. But as you can see behind me, I can finally show you just how big it is. I keep talking about it, I've talked about it so much. And now next to the X3, are you understanding what I mean? Because it's made my car look like a one series. And that's something which maybe for me, maybe that's too big for central London. Which is why I like the idea of the 90, but then the 90 is impractical because it's only got three doors. I mean. Anyway, I can't decide. I'm still ifing and butting. What are your thoughts on the Defender? Have you grown to appreciate it and like it a bit more now that you're used to it? I have to say, it looks much better off-road than I think it does on-road. It still looks a bit weird design-wise for me on the road. Off-road, it kind of 
fit in perfectly. So yeah, I'm confused, but I've really enjoyed today. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you have, and make sure you stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come.